After getting flogged by a division rival for the second time in four games, Denver 3-6 turns its sights to what I feel is the surprise team in the NFL in the Miami Dolphins 6-3. Can the Broncos get back in the win column? Again with the questions and we'll get the answers here here is Broncos's injury report for week 11. Out, LB Joseph Jones calf questionable. CB Bryce Callahan illness, Tay Noah Fant ribs, G Graham Glasgow calf, QB Drew Locke ribs, T Jake Rogers shoulder, DT Deshaun Williams ankle. Denver Broncos's QB Drew Locke participated in both individual and team reps on Thursday. The second-year quarterback said he has felt better each day since the game and never believed that he suffered a fracture to his ribs. It's been a good process so far with the doctors and all the trainers here, Locke said Thursday. I got to go out and throw the ball. That's all I could really ask for today. I was excited and ready to get back out there and throw it. I was feeling good. Locke said he wants to play Sunday against the Dolphins but admitted the final decision will be left up to the medical staff and coaching staff. I'm going to take it day by day with these doctors and the trainers and even the coaches, Locke said. I'm going to let them make a decision on whether or not they want to play me or not and obviously I'll give my opinion, and it's going to be that I want to play. In the end, it's not 100% up to me what happens. Tight end Noah Fant also returned to practice Thursday on a limited basis, and head coach Vic Fangio said he was confident that Fant would be okay to play. Tackle Jake Rogers' shoulder also improved to limited, while linebacker Josie Jewell quad and safety Trey Marshall elbow improved from limited participants to full participants. Tackle Calvin Anderson ankle cornerback AJ Bowie hip and wide receiver Jerry Judy ankle remain limited. Linebacker Joe Jones calf did not practice for the second consecutive day. Drew's ability to play this Sunday. Denver Broncos quarterback Drew Locke is officially listed as questionable for Sunday's game against the Miami Dolphins. The Broncos hope to decide later today if Locke or Brett Ripien will start in Week 11. Elsewhere on Denver's injury report, cornerback Bryce Callahan illness, not COVID-19, and tight end Noah Fant ribs are also listed as questionable. Coach Vic Fangio said he expects Fant to play. Callahan's status is less certain. As of Friday, that may or may not end up being Drew Locke. The second-year signal caller is listed as questionable for Sunday's game with a rib injury, for the team's injury report. Locke wants to play, and Saturday morning's session will play a factor in determining whether he can suit up, NFL Network's James Palmer reported. Vic Fangio's staff wants to see how well Locke can throw and how he feels after doing so, Palmer added. Locke is undoubtedly Denver's best option and gives the team its best odds of victory against a surging Dolphins squad quarterbacked by rookie Tua Tungavailoa. Without him, the Broncos have been forced to insert backups Jeff Driscoll and Brett Ripien, with the latter earning a win but not proving much to bolster Denver's confidence that he can lead the Broncos to an upset victory. Denver's season has been significantly impacted by injuries, and has hinged on the availability of Locke. Even when available, Locke has proven to be unreliable, posting a completion percentage of 55.0 and a touchdown-to-interception ratio of 7-10 while winning just two of his seven games. The Broncos have struggled to avoid crucial errors, leading the league in giveaways 21 so far this season. Locke hasn't made life much easier for his team, either, owning the highest percentage of uncatchable passing attempts 26.3 in the league this season, minimum 100 attempts per pro football focus. That doesn't bode well for his future, with each of the three QBs with the highest such percentages in 2019 now sitting third on the depth chart or worse with their respective teams, including Locke's teammate, Driscoll. And what should he do if Drew Locke come out this weekend when Gordon signed a two-year, $16 million deal in free agency, the Broncos were expecting the kind of performances Gordon had against the Jets on October 1 when he ran for 107 yards and two touchdowns. Since then, Gordon has missed one game with strep throat and averaged a middling 3.5 yards on 42 carries with just one more touchdown, none in November. He also has the threat of a three-game suspension hanging over him for a drunken driving arrest in October. Lindsay's turf toe injury in the opener sidelined him for three games and he returned with a workmanlike 101-yard day on 23 carries in a victory at New England when Gordon was sick. 
Since then, he's carried fewer than seven times a game even though he averaged 8.8 .8 yards per run against the Chiefs and 13.8 yards per carry against the Chargers, when his 55-yard TD scamper triggered a second-half comeback from a 21-point deficit. Lindsay, the only running back in NFL history to surpass 450 carries without a fumble, made it clear last week that he believed the run game could ignite the Broncos' offense. You're physical, you're pushing it down the field, you're punching them in the face, Lindsay said. There's only a handful or maybe one or two teams that can live off the pass 24-7. That's just not how it is. Yet, Lindsay carried just four times for two yards in the Broncos' blowout loss at Las Vegas, where the Raiders ran for 203 yards to Denver's 66. We got behind, and you're not going to get a lot of opportunities in the run game when you're behind, coach Vic Fangio said. Lindsay, who had 1,000-yard seasons in each of his first two years, when he piled up 17 touchdowns, has averaged an impressive 5.5 yards per carry this season but he's rushed for just 312 yards and one score on 52 carries and he's caught just two passes or 14 yards. I think it's good if Phillip touches the ball and we'll keep trying to get it to him, embattled offensive coordinator Pat Shermer said this week. Gordon has run for 439 yards and 4 TDs and 107 carries for a 4.1-yard average, and he has 20 receptions for 87 yards and a touchdown. The Broncos, who are 19th in the league in rushing, have never led in losses to the Chiefs, Falcons and Raiders in the last month. They've not only trailed but trailed big. They were down 24-9 at the half against Kansas City, fell behind the Chargers 24-3 and watched the Falcons go up 27-6. Last week they trailed 10-6 at halftime in Las Vegas but surrendered 20 unanswered points to begin the second half. They're also falling way behind the first down marker. After averaging 5.4 yards to go on third down in their opener against Tennessee, the Broncos' average yards to gain on third down is a whopping 8.2, which is making Denver one-dimensional and putting Locke in harm's way. He suffered bruised ribs and a strained oblique last Sunday. We've got to do more early in the game to keep it in a run-pass situation," Shermer said. I believe in running the football and I think it's something that we need to do more and better. The Broncos 3-6 host the Miami Dolphins 6-3 this weekend. The Dolphins have set a franchise mark by scoring at least 17 first-half points in their five consecutive victories. Let's hear the head coach of Broncos talk about the ability to play of Drew. This isn't what anyone expected from Drew Locke heading into year two. The former second-round pick entered the offseason having given the Denver Broncos a lot to smile about in regards to his potential at the NFL level, returning to the field from an injury that cost him 11 games to deliver a 4-1 record that included seven touchdowns to three interceptions. Now nine games games into 2020 season, he's logged seven starts and his regression is on full tilt helping to torpedo the Broncos in their efforts to defeat the Las Vegas Raiders in Week 10, pushing Denver to a 3-6 record in the process. Locke threw a career-worst four interceptions on Sunday and had only one touchdown, ending in a 37-12 shellacking at Allegiant Stadium, pushing his marks this year to only seven TDs with 10 INTs and only seven regular season games remaining. On the heels on the humiliating loss, Vic Fangio isn't mincing words, outright admitting his displeasure with Locke's current arc. Obviously, it's very much of a concern, he told media, via NFL.com. With four interceptions, you can't win turning the ball over that much. Fangio isn't placing all of the blame on his young quarterback, though. We've got to do a good job of evaluating why we've thrown these interceptions, and what can we do to help him, said the Broncos head coach. Everybody's fingerprints is on that performance, coaches, players, and we all have to take a good hard look at it, which we have been on a weekly basis, but we haven't found the right formula yet to be consistent on offense. Once the giveaways began racking up, the Broncos were forced to abandon a run they hadn't yet established anyway, leading to Locke being forced to try and shoot his way out of a grave he primarily dug for himself, to the tune of 47 pass attempts. He completed just 23 of those throws and finished with a 37.3 passer rating on the day, numbers Fangio and the Broncos don't ever want to see from their franchise quarterback. It's the fourth consecutive game in which Locke has thrown more than 40 times, and he has eight interceptions through that four-game stretch. Still, the coaching staff sees the potential in Locke and despite their vocal concerns, they're not benching him. We're committed to Drew and the more he can play, 
the better he'll be, Fangio said. He's got to fight through this like most young quarterbacks do at some point in their career and we're going to continue to play him. Now, Broncos key to victory Denver can't afford to fall behind early as it has in multiple games this season. Broncos RBs Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay need to lead the way with productive gains on first and second down, setting up QB Drew Locke with third and manageable situations. In the games Denver has fallen behind this year, the Broncos have had too many early three and outs. The offensive line can help remedy that trend by opening up better running lanes for Gordon and Lindsay, which will also help the passing game. If Miami turns its focus to Denver's rushing attack, Locke will be able to utilize play action to find WR Jerry Judy and Tay Noah Fant for big gains downfield.